the other thing that I have always been curious about is your production, like the mixes, has always been very dry, which I love. Especially, you know, you guys were coming up in the era when metal bands were starting to, in my opinion, get kind of overproduced, a lot of editing and samples, and, you know, that has, a, has its place. But to me, your records basically sound like just the raw source tones kind of balanced in terms of levels. They're almost, they almost sound unmixed, if that makes sense, but in a cool way. Where did that approach come from? It came from, I have a very sensitive ear to <clears throat> drum samples and um, things being run through processes. It actually grates my ear. I, I listen yeah. to it and I, I, I understand that if you were to take a sampled kick drum and put it up a real, to a real one and you put it in a track, that you're going to consistently hear the sample more and it's easier to mix and it feels bigger but there's something about the soul of Brooks Wackerman and the soul mm -hmm. of what you're seeing and being in a live setting and looking at a band, the other one just feels better to me. And as time goes on, we're starting to get more and more shit about our production, but also a lot more praise. So I love it. It sounds so unique. I think it sounds unique. And the thing is when you have every band using the same sample libraries and they're running their guitars through the same modulations and the same processes and you have everyone using the same vocal reverbs and everyone tuning their vocals perfectly and nothing mm -hmm. kind of you know is in that in between and nothing really catches your ear you start getting these really perfect sounding quantized uh, electronic sounding weirdness that to me as soon as i hear it i don't listen anymore yeah i imagine same. bohemian rhapsody or stairway to heaven having drum samples <laughs> processed guitars quantized to a click track and all the vocals tuned imagine what that would sound like you would take brilliant songs and they would be ruined they would just be ruined and then piece that with brick walling your master so that it's peaking the whole time so that you can be louder than journey or boston whoever else is out at the time imagine that that's what we've come to because a typical fan goes, I like loud. I like loud. Turn it the fuck up then. Turn it up. But now you have streaming where everyone's like, you never had this problem with vinyl and with CDs because you weren't playing them back to back. Now with right. streaming, everyone's trying to out like loudness each other or they're trying to outdo each other with these big bombastic sounds and it doesn't work. And it's another reason why I think, and then you look at the greats of every genre, Daft Punk, completely organic record. Kanye does a lot of organic stuff. He's got Elton John in there and he's got real singing and he auto tunes when he needs to, and he, but for an effect, right? And then he's got real vocals when he wants it. And he's using all these real things. He's using real strings. He's really using real. And we're in a, we're in a place now where even when a band does stuff real, like us, people still think it's fake. Oh, I know what, I know what sample those, uh, those horns came from. Oh, really? I remember being in Sony studios, recording that specifically getting the mic deep down so that we would have the attack of that thing. But now we got expert on YouTube. <laughs> hey, I know that sample library. Okay. Like literally we live in freaking right. crazy world. Um, but we're just going to, you know, for us production and I keep hearing like the mix isn't good. Like I don't want a pop mo vocal mix. When I listen to tool, it stays heavy because Maynard's not, sitting way on top while the music gets smaller. The more you bring up that vocal, one more DB, that riff becomes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so these are all personal things that we like to do, but it's different, but we, we definitely get to catch flack for it. But I think it's the wrong way to go about it. I think staying organic, I want to hear the band and people go, oh, well, you guys have money and you can record drums. I honestly, honest to God, would rather hear one microphone hanging from a garage and hear that drum kit than the perfectly sampled out, you know, tone replaced, quantized fake drum set that most of these bands are going with. That's my personal I, opinion. I bet a lot of old James Brown records and stuff probably had one or two mics in a room yep. for the drums. 100%. It's fucking James Brown. And a lot of those punk records, I mean, 
they probably were mic'd up, but those things that this sounds like real drums. Listen to mm -hmm. those. Like, it, like there's great drummers in punk and you can hear everything and it just sounds wild and it sounds open and it sounds like, yeah, it's, it's over the top. But to me, that's exciting. I love that. I love when a record, I put it on, it has personality where I'm like, Oh, this is, I remember one of my favorite sounding records ever was, um, live fast diarrhea by the vandals yeah With josh freese's drums on that that pork pie snare that oh sounds so good so good i mean we ran out to guitar center and bought a pork pie right <laughs> after that. i remember the rev we bought a pork pie and we would play with that on you know like all the time when we were playing punk bands i mean you would never get that nowadays it'd be too afraid to put that sound in, in a record You're, yeah but, it's that's not in the rule book you can't play those piccolo you know whatever those pork pie like 10 by sixes or whatever they were no you, you need even if you're now. playing this fast you got to have the black album snare or some yeah. you know like things that don't even fit with the music just crack 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 and it's like no so you know that's one of the things that i really loved about uh your early records is there were so many layers and so much shit going on, but it was all so detailed and clear because it wasn't over-processed. Like you can hear all the details in all those drum parts, even though there's also probably seven layers of guitars and four vocal harmonies and you can hear everything. Yeah. I remember when we went to Andy Wallace for the first time with City of Evil, the fact that he could bring out every single, you could hear every single thing happening. That's mm -hmm. all we asked from him. We, we handed him like 200 tracks a song, you know, and the guy's like, this is awesome. This is cool. <laughs> he never threw a sample on it. He never did anything. He, what I love about Andy is he mixes what you give him. Right. And a lot of these guys, and I know this because I know a lot of bands, you give them something, you spent two weeks on a drum tone, then they just go put the samples on that they want to put on yeah. it because it's easier for them to mix. And then they give it back to you and there's no debating it. It's like, that's, that's what I do. And it's like, well, why did I spend two weeks? Like, let's not even spend any time on the drums anymore. And you're starting to see people realize that and not spend any time on the drums. Yep. I remember when I met Mudrock before Waking the Fall and he said, Matt, with the Pro Tools stuff that I have, you could kick a drum set down a flight of stairs and I can make it sound like a real drummer's playing. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what, that's where we're at now, and that's what you're getting. And you know, if you're a small band and you legitimately don't have the money to record drums, by all means, do that. You know, but if you have the opportunity to do something real, I mean, especially with the level of musicians that you have in the band, why the fuck would you sample replace Brooks or edit Brian? Like that's insane. It's insane, but I, and I'd even rather hear a bad drummer play real 